Hey guys, Thomas Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Time, here to do my video game review for The Outer Worlds. Like every other video game review so far, I'll be going over the story, and then gameplay, and scoring them separately, as I have been doing in the past. If you end up enjoying this video, then please consider joining my Patreon page, any donations are desperately needed. With that being said, Let's jump right into the story of the Outer Worlds. So, in the Outer Worlds, you are awoken in outer space after X amount of years, and you sort of become a uh, frontier fighter for whichever group you decide to eventually join. Um, it does lean you towards always being a good guy. A lot closer, I feel like, in this scenario. Uh, and that is, if you saw my gameplay, you know that there is indeed a choice at one part of the game. I'm actually currently going through the other potential choice in the game uh, and seeing what that partakes in uh, while still technically being a good guy. So, uh, and I'll talk more about why I'm doing that later. But for the story, you essentially uh, go to several different planets, and along them uh, you meet and greet your party, which feels like it is very close to being mandatory without necessarily being mandatory. You can bring them on, along board. They're pretty easy to spot. Uh, in my gameplay, I managed to miss one, and I picked him up after the fact in the second playthrough that I'm doing right now. And you stop. You either stop the evil, evil big corporation, uh, Halcyon, uh, by joining one of the several two groups that it provides you that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I think that there is an option to join Halcyon, um, most likely. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it's probably something you can do later in the game. Or maybe you just make choices later on that provide you with that opportunity. Can't say for sure, but what I do know is that the story is pretty... It's actually pretty short, all things considered. Uh, I was considered... I was actually surprised on how quickly I ended up getting to the second planet. And that is because I mainly focused on the main story while leaving the secondary... Uh, the only other quest I was doing was the uh, companion side quest. There are other side quests available, and from time to time I would do them, but I was mainly focusing on the story quest. Uh, and in the end, you prevail, yada yada yada, and it gives you a brief summary of... Uh, what people were doing after the fact, whether they made it or not, or uh, if they are struggling, or if they died, or whatever. So, pretty solid story, I would say. I wouldn't say it's anything too spectacular. Uh, I probably graded a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, I don't want to overhype it, like its initial release, when people were doing the whole big 9 out of 10s that you've probably seen for a lot of big game reviews. Um, I'm not one to follow that trend necessarily. If I feel an objection, I will state it clearly, and I do. I don't feel like the story is worthy of a 9 out of 10. Um, I, I, I do think this is more of a run-of-the-mill story. Nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary, or anything that would surprise me and make me go, yeah, that is a story worth telling, but I do, I do think that it is a solid story nonetheless. Now, so, with that being said, let's move on to gameplay. The gameplay is a first-person shooter game, uh... And I'm going to be making a few comparisons to Fallout 4. Now, the reason for this being, and I'm pretty sure others have made their comparisons to Fallout 4 in their reviews, is that this group was split up from Fallout 4 to make their own group called Oblivion. Um, and this was their 
off the heel of Fallout 4's uh, title launch. Uh, as Fallout 4 went to continue on to make out Fallout 76 and so on and so forth. Uh, I do feel like even if you look at the intros to both of these games, they're very similar, or they're similar enough where you wake up after an X amount of time, only in this scenario you're in space. And your uh, partner does not get executed by some person uh, that you're destined to kill regardless of what side you're trying to be on. Nonetheless, um, the game uh, follows a very simple uh, point A to point B semi-open world well, I say semi-open world because once you actually enter any of the worlds, you'll notice that the uh, the areas are actually a lot more linear, uh, in fact. Uh, there just happens to be several worlds you can occupy and move along with in. Uh, one thing I was noting when playing the main game, uh, and focusing mainly on the story, is that I was having a real tough time escalating to the next part of the game. Uh, and in fact, the term I kept using was the level of escalation. For those of you who don't know what that means, let me explain for you what that means. In a game where there is a certain threshold or challenge, uh, usually the level of escalation is just challenging enough where you go, wow, that was pretty intense, but I managed to get through. That is a challenge rating that is just slightly above the what the character or player is capable of. And in this scenario, the level of escalation always felt way too high. And it mainly came from me focusing on the main story. Now, there are other elements to this, and I'll get to it a little bit later on. However, I will say that I do think that that is an issue for the game. Still, regardless of any shortcomings that I still had after the fact, I do still think that that is a problem. I do think that it, you as a player should be capable of be beating the main story without feeling the need to do side quests, which in the, in the case of this game it feels like the, the side quests actually feel mandatory. And I've always been a, a prioritized that not being the case. Side quest, there's a reason it is called a side quest. It is a quest you can do on the side, but is also optional. That is the key point. It is optional. Uh, it is not mandatory. And in this game, it feels like it is mandatory. Um, at least when you don't have a higher understanding of the game, which I didn't at the time. Uh, I will say that, uh, the lack of armor pickups and the lack of health led to quick deaths and low, low, low damage thresholds that I was doing to the enemy. So I was always constantly struggling to get through the main game, which again, I still have an issue with regardless. As I mentioned before, I do think you should be capable of beating the game without needing all of that stuff. So with that being said, I do think that that is an issue still. The other issue that I find is the loading times. Now this I will not excuse. There is no excuse for the long, and I mean long, loading times in this game. I made constant comparisons from this game to Ghost of Tsushima, which was the, a game I was playing with side by side with at this game as well. And that's why I was making comparisons to Ghost of Tsushima which when you die in that game, the loading is instantaneous and the checkpoints are also fair on top of that. In this case, while the checkpoints are fair, the loading times are still absolutely ludicrous. It is simply unacceptable for load times to be this long anymore. There is no excuse for it. Um, and it definitely made me feel like going through the side quests, even what I'm doing right now, it made it feel like way more of a slog to get through. It made the pacing even more irritating. 
and just like, oh, I can't believe I died. Now I have to wait like th like three whole minutes for the loading screen to get through. When it, you should be like waiting like what a few seconds for a loading screen. That's the usually the time for Ghost of Tsushima. Um, again, to make that comparison. Uh, so I will stand by that the loading screens are absolutely ridiculous. So, what is the methodology of questing and gunplay that allows for easier gameplay? Uh, apparently, constantly upgrading your guns in the weapon uh, cache area or upgrade area is mandatory if you want to do any decent amount of damage consistently. Same thing for armor, is to constantly look for armor at the armor shops and make sure you're always wearing the highest numbered armor available to be protected for the most part and to be protected very well constantly. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that. I'm more of a fan of being able to progress without the need to be sidetracked by either of these things. I do feel like if we're again, again, we're making a comparison to Fallout 4, uh, which I know there's a lot of, um, I felt like that level of progression made a bit more sense. Uh, exceptionally, you know, you have that moment at the very beginning of the game where you meet a death call pretty early on but you have the armor to provide you with to able to either survive it by running away or gunning it down which you can do either of uh, this uh, comparison i also track to talking about a little bit about stealth uh, fallout 4 for example has a stealth mechanic that is implemented pretty well in that game by comparison to the Outer Worlds, I do feel like the stealth is severely lacking in this game. The level design doesn't necessarily allow for great stealth mechanics to be implemented, and sneaking around in and of itself feels like it's impossible to do. Um, but stealth is a part of the game. You can put, put points into stealth, so it doesn't make sense that stealth is a mechanic but it serves no greater purpose to other than to seemingly waste points in stealth which I felt like was the opposite of the direction of Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 stealth felt like one of the most overpowered skills to have in that game uh, being able to sneak up right behind enemies and say implant the, a bomb in their inventory and then let them blow up for example here, uh, it feels like the level design doesn't allow you to sneak up behind enemies. Uh, I've tried sneaking, you can see in my gameplay. Uh, I was able to get pretty far, but some of the other areas uh, I felt, the, again, mostly from the design aspect, uh, was severely limited, making stealth, again, seem fairly impossible. Uh, so that's another point of deduction. So, I'm not going to rave and say like this is the greatest game that came out of its time simply because it came off of the heels of people that were angry with Fallout 4 and wanted to make their own uh, game company. Uh, this is not a Jim Sterling video, which I know I watched his video on this and he was absolutely raving about this game. He was one of the people to rave about this game when it came out, especially. Uh, that's one of the one I noted, particularly when I made this review. I wanted to make sure that people know that I was not a particular fan of uh, just, uh, you know, just giving it a pass. You know, just saying, oh, it's a fantastic game. I'm not that kind of person. I'm going to play through the game and be as objective as possible, which is why I'm mentioning all of these flaws in the gameplay. Uh, I do feel like that severely staggers the gameplay from what could have been an easy solid 7 or an even 8 to a 5. I feel like there are a lot of different little mechanics that are just not implemented well enough to uh, 
to get me to say that this is a, even a 7. Uh, on top of the long loading screens, that being an atrocity of it on itself, uh, the side quest being mandatory, which uh, again, uh, I don't think that's how you should ever set up side quest, uh, to the micromanaging level of consistently consistency that you have the player has to do in order to keep up with what the game is throwing at you. I feel like these three elements hold the game back in terms of gameplay. And on top of that, I noticed when I was playing it a secondary time right now, uh, while upgrading consistently and um, doing it that way, it still causes the game to uh, shake up a bit a lot more often. And that's because it's probably trying to tra keep track of higher numbers and calculating higher damages and so on and so forth. Uh, which leads to the game uh, staggering a lot more often. Uh, it happens way too consistently, so even if you... Even if I were to give the uh, level of escalation a pass, the game still kind of staggers apart. Not necessarily 100%, but still pretty atrocious, uh, not to the level of saying a game crash, but still pretty bad. Uh, so I would still stick with a 5 out of 10. I do feel like the gameplay is stuck in the middle. Uh, now I want to note that this uh, review is not including the DLC, which I also find pretty humorous. And here's why. This whole game going back to the story aspect of it, it's all about uh, corporate greed and, you know, that money, ooh, the, the greedy corporate, ooh, you know, bam, the big guy. Uh, and this game came out with the DLC to continue its gameplay, and guess what? You have to pay for that DLC. And just to make another comparison to Ghost of Tsushima, that game came out with a full story, and its DLC came out for free. So, even its own message feels a little bit hypocritical now that there's DLC you have to pay for if you want to experience its DLC. Now, of course, DLC is never mandatory, but I do find that part a little bit more hypocritical now with, say, an experience like Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, if I haven't made it notably clear enough, if I were to say what games I would prefer over this game, The Outer Worlds, I would say either play Fallout 4 for the first time, or again, instead of this, or play Ghost of Tsushima instead. Those two games are far superior than this game ever could be. I hope Oblivion has learned its lesson from this game, has uh, figured out how to... Uh, deal with the level of escalation and deal with loading times and deal with micromanaging your inventory uh, because I do I do think that they have potential to be still good um, but man it, it, it bugs me when things like this fall flat it, it definitely bugs me when I have to say eh, it's not as great as what's been it when it's been chalked up to be so again that's a five out of ten and again the, just that funny note of hypocrisy now of paid dlc i find that very amusing uh just for my subjective or slightly more subjective but like hmm fascinating that you made paid dlc while ghost of tsushima said here have this content for free um so yeah that's my full review of The Outer Worlds, and if you enjoyed this, auto, this review for The Outer Worlds, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head over to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are desperately needed, and until next time, everyone, bye-bye!